Once again, I'd like to welcome you to the Facebook page of Cullingham Memorial Presbyterian Church uh, here in the village of Cullibacke. As we continue to deal with and seek to come to terms with the effects of the coronavirus, we are very conscious of the fact that thousands of families throughout the world have lost loved ones as a result of it. Personal loss and bereavement have come into many homes and so today we pause to remember in our thoughts and in our prayers all those whose hearts are heavy with sadness and sorrow. We also remember those who have the virus and who are currently under medical care for it. And in our prayers for them, we trust that they will recover and be restored to full health and strength. In recent days, we have heard of our Prime Minister Boris Johnson's journey with the virus from the beginning when symptoms first appeared, leading in time after a period of self-isolation to his admission to hospital and then into the intensive care unit. But over the weekend, we were delighted to hear of his recovery and of his release from St Thomas's Hospital in London. On getting home, the Prime Minister expressed his profound gratitude to the National Health Service in general and to certain doctors and nurses in particular for the excellent medical care that he received. And today, as we consider the ongoing battle against the virus, we surely want to give thanks to God for all in the National Health Service who are playing their part to help overcome the virus and to bring comfort and healing to all affected by it. And outside the National Health Service, many others are working hard to care for and to provide all the necessities that we need at this time. In this respect, we think of those who are working in our local health centres and research laboratories and pharmacies and schools in the food supply chain in transport and retail, in care in the community, including voluntary work, in our security forces, and of course in government, who formulate policies and who make important decisions. In our thoughts and prayers, we are to remember all such and many more besides who are doing what they can to help us navigate as a nation through this crisis and to bring normality back to our lives. In all of this, we surely identify with the psalmist who said in Psalm 27, verse 13, I had fainted or I would have lost heart unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. As a minister, I often quote that verse as part of my pastoral work sharing that verse with people at difficult times in their lives. The psalmist was living in very unpleasant circumstances, yet he was thankful to God that in the midst of such, he was able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Today, we thank God for the evidence of his goodness all around about us in the lives of so many people who are doing so much to help us at this time. In verse 14 of that psalm, the psalmist goes on to say, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Here he reminds us that our ultimate strength and comfort comes from the Lord, that he is the one who is able to give us courage to face today and all our tomorrows. And so as we give thanks to the Lord for the evidence of his goodness all around about us in the land of the living, may we wait on him with faith and trust, saving faith and trust in him as our only hope of salvation. And so may we be able to know his comfort, his strength, and his courage in our hearts in these strange and uncertain days. I want to leave you with a few verses from a well-known hymn written by an Ulster man called Joseph Scriven, indeed written by him to bring comfort to his mother 
at a difficult time in his life and in her life. And those words are as follows. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. May God bless his word as we have read it and considered it, and now we continue to wait upon him as we pray together. Let us pray. Our Father, we come indeed to wait upon you, in the attitude of prayer, we come to remember again before your throne of grace all those whose lives have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who have been bereaved as a result of it. We pray for those who are under medical care and attention because they have contracted the virus. And Father, we pray for all those who provide us with the things that we need each day. We ask, O God, that you will set your hand of protection around about them and be unto them all that they would need. Our Father, we do remember, especially our our National Health Service and all who are involved in the medical profession, we pray that you will keep them safe and well as they attend to those who are ill. And Father, may they too know your strength and your grace. We thank you again for this this lovely verse in Scripture where the psalmist was able to acknowledge the, the evidence of your goodness in the land of the living. And Father, we look around and we thank you for such evidence all around about us today in these strange and difficult and uncertain days. But we come to wait upon you, acknowledging that our, our ultimate strength comes From you, I to the hills will lift my eyes. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So, our Father, we pray that you will help us, that you will lead us and guide us, comfort us, and strengthen us at this time. And we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen.